My name is Madeline Angel and I lead the marketing team here at Tulip and I am so honored to have so many uh, familiar and also new faces joining us today for Operations Calling. Uh, this is our inaugural event and the goal that we set out when we were first designing this event was to have there be so much interesting and cool stuff that it would be impossible for you to do everything that you wanted to. So let me know if that ends up being the case. It was a high bar, uh, but a lot of fun extras, great content and really cool people here today uh, that you should try to find some time to explore and meet. Um, it's my honor to introduce, uh, for opening remarks, our CEO and co-founder, Natan Linder. All right, all right. Good morning, everybody. This is the right way to do this. I really appreciate everyone coming here and joining us for uh, Operations Calling, which is, yeah, really our uh, first uh, ever uh, put together user conference. It's a big milestone for our company. I want to welcome everyone here in Assembly Square in Somerville. This used to be a Ford factory. They used to make cars here. Uh, it's pretty amazing, poetic, to bring it back. Uh, we always dreamed about this moment. Um, we also joined online, so there's a bunch of people watching this, so we welcome them as well. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have a, a great day, so let's get going. The first thing, you know, when we set up an event, we thought about a theme. And because events need theme, and music is this amazing sort of motivational um, theme, a music festival specifically. Uh, it's a good thing, it's a good way to think about the moment the industry is experiencing, in specifically in frontline operations. Um, you know, music is about instrument and tools, uh, getting the beat right, producing seminal albums, and all those kind of things that makes music amazing, but it's also about the groups that make them, uh, how they collaborate, how they, Kind of come together to create like a cultural phenomenon. You know, I don't, I don't think anyone, anyone doesn't know what this is. This is Woodstock, right? So in 1969, um, they put the, they put these events. And the, the reason this is interesting as a, as a motivational metaphor, it's because it's, a, uh, it's really capturing like, you know, everything after Woodstock kind of changed, and it, of course, evolved dramatically, but it never, it never goes away. You know, music kind of changed everything. It's also kind of the year uh, PLCs were invented and put to work. So it's just like, you know, my history buff. Uh, but I, uh, it was cut out of my uh, slide budget, so I can't tell you more about this. We'll do this some other time. Um, so, you know, when you think about this moment and how we need to keep rocking, and really the question we should ask, okay, what's going on and what, what is happening now? And actually, it's a very, very simple answer. No one here, especially not us, as Tulip, and I think we're, I'm pretty sure it's the same for our partners, uh, should be satisfied with the current status quo of industrial operation technology. Uh, especially when you think about what happened in the past 20, 30 years on the internet. Um, it's just, just not going to cut it. And I don't think anybody needs a reminder for the past few years where we just had events that exasperated the situation. This is, uh, I, I, know, I know everybody forgot about COVID-19 and how it changed everything in the compressed supply chain, but uh, it, it, just, it just reminded us how things were complex and are getting more complex. Uh, the world is more connected and supply chains are more interdependent. And that translates to the needs partners are requiring us uh, uh, in operations. Everything needs to be faster. Cycles of product needs to go um, to customers based on their needs and so on and so forth. So speed, agility. And at the end of the day, it's all about productivity and how do you get this done. And that's really a lot of pressure to change. So, you know, when, when I think about change, um, and I don't think you can think about change without thinking about history. And we all know if you come, if you spend any time in operation, and anywhere here did not see a lean um, temple metaphor to describe how the operation should work. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of nods, so I'm, I'm going to take that as a yes. And, th and that, that's very true because this is like amazing architecture, stands the test of time. Uh, but you know, now we're building cities that have skyscrapers with uh, fast trains, bullet trains, and high-speed internet, and all those kind of things. So you get the metaphor. The architectures have changed. Not only the architectures have changed, the people who make those architectures need different things. Because you know, while a beautiful Greek temple on a hill or a small city is great and inspiring, it's not enough. It, it, it doesn't cut it in the world. Um, we live in today, and you know, and, and this is sort of an obvious architecture metaphor, but it 
doesn't mean a lot without one important component, and that component is ecosystem. Why? Because the type of architectures we're building today do not exist in a single company. And anyone who's thinking differently uh, is either naive or misrepresenting reality. And this is the case in the broad internet uh, and how we build our IT infrastructure and have built them for decades of cloud transformation. And you should just, you know, don't, you don't have to listen to me. You just look around the room, look at who's here. We have partners representing 27 companies, and that's just the beginning. And these are, you know, the people uh, who put together these architectures. And the, the thing I'm sure a lot of you have heard before, and this is mostly an internal statement, like people come and say, you know, we just need to connect the top floor to the shop floor. And that's nice, but listen, it's not just bottom up or top down and vice versa. It's really omnidirectional. It's like left and right. So think about your leadership, your operators, the engineers who support them, um, the consultants, the vendors, the system integrators, the list can go on. You, you, really, you really need to take it uh, all into account. Understand this is about bringing stakeholders together to design and implement. And you know, designing and implementing the architecture, and this is, uh, you know, this is a safe place. We're very inclusive for IT, OT. Everybody come together. And I, you know, I love sort of going out and seeing stuff in the wild. Um, so this is in the wild from Hanover, and I think there was a moment in April this year, picture I was taking uh, at the AWS booth. Who, were, you know, this is the moment to thank AWS for sponsoring our, our day here. Uh, and even the fact that infrastructure player like AWS are sponsoring an event like that and putting out the blueprints that seems almost common to any IT person, but where have they been the past 20 years? Okay, so I think there's a moment here. And on the left side, not less important, th these are not just cute pictures, you know? It, this is a little bit funny, you know, it says like, have a beer with an engineer, today what they have is tomorrow's wow. Like, what is that? It's, it's speaking to the human-centered nature of the people implementing these kinds of architectures. And you can, be curious about it. You can try and think, well, what's going on? But one thing you cannot do, you cannot ignore this, because this is already happening and changing your organizations, and it's needed. And so who, who is actually filling like the boxes and the lines here and giving those tools to the architects and then the engineers and then to the operator actually do what? Continuously improve our operations. This is not architectures for the sake of architectures. It's the partners. And I'm extremely thankful for everyone who showed up to the event, as I mentioned, 27 partners. This is the avant-garde group. This is the group of people and companies who understand this calling and um, joined us to build it. So again, big thank you. This ecosystem will grow. I think what's more important is to uh, share with you how it will grow. Uh, there's two vectors that we're planning to grow this. One is customer solution centric. So if customers are gonna come to us and say, we need this machine learning, uh, tool or data collection or what have you, uh, those partners, we're going to enable them on the tool platform and we're launching this today and I have a lot of excitement around this. I, we, we took a count yesterday and ops calling just to share with you have been roughly like five months in the making since we decided, okay, this is, this is it, go time, you know, we're still a startup and, you know, we, we are proud of this mentality that we can put our heads together and, and uh, put an event like this. Over 60 distinct demos are here. So just to echo what Maddie just said, you're likely, well, if you're really disciplined, you probably can see a bunch of them, but uh, it's, it'll be hard to see them all. But the point is that how did they come together? How, and some of them came, came together literally the past uh, couple of weeks or something like that. It, it's all about the architecture and the platform. And again, not solely Tulip. We could not have put those demos without uh, these folks uh, and ha them having sort of alignment to this uh, type of approach. So this is vector one that the ecosystem will grow. The second one is there are all sorts of partners and they want to go to the customer with their technology and their solution. We invite you, come join us. We're open and we're excited that people uh, uh, here uh, would love to, our people here would love to talk to you about that if you want to join. So back for a little bit for our motivation. And so this is Boston. And for the local people, I'm sure you all know Boston Calling. And uh, Boston Calling is the music festival for Boston. So that's why we named it Operation Calling. I know some of you did not make that connection. So let me help you. Um, but really, what we loved about Operation Calling is the fact that it has the word calling. It's kind of nice to have a calling. It makes the movement real. 
And, and the calling is very simple. It's about people. So I, I've been talking to folks on shop floor for years and years. And uh, you know, I've been saying and echoing what I've heard. And they continuously say, look, the best computer or the best technology we have on the shop floor is what? It's, it's the human. It's just the humans on our shop floor. They show up when things really break. They, they think not with uh, artificial intelligence. You know, note that this is the first time we said this in this talk. They think with real intelligence, and we, we have to support them. That's the calling. That's what respect, that's the respect that Lean teaches us to the people who do the work. That's how you get to autonomous operators, autonomous team, autonomous organization, but now it's time to augment them. So take care of the people, train them, upskill them, get them to where they want to be. They are the ones who are going to implement the architecture. And by the way, it takes a village. So this is our community, and this is how it looks like today. So we have over, we just, it's, it's a very exciting milestones for, for Tulip. We just crossed 4,000 citizen developers. And I, I remember when we started this company, um, a lot of uh, uh, good friends you know, uh, told me, look, you're, you all are crazy. No one is going to let this kind of uh, technology run around loose in operations and IT will kill, all, all the sorts of things you can't imagine. And we're still hearing that, OK? But 4,000 people augmenting their operations and we're seeing what they're doing is, is pretty amazing and supporting 80,000 frontline workers. So th these, are nice, these are nice numbers, but, but that's not the thing I want people to take out of it. What, what I can tell you is that the dynamics of the growth here looks like internet curves. And I think this is the first time we're seeing it in, in, in industrial operations. And it's not about Tulip again. This is also happening in our partners and this is how our in, entire ecosystem is starting to adopt technology. So, I think we should uh, appreciate that and understand that this is the beginning, and that's what I mean when I say it takes a village. And we have a name for these people and understand who is doing this. Uh, we call them the groundbreakers. And we actually have an award to recognize them, so please, if you go to that corner over there, uh, you can go and nominate. Um, if you see something cool, and we'd love to start this award. Um, and these people, um, they have different names, and we call them operational hackers or uh, factory hackers or operational architects. But let's characterize that. These are people who can cross the chasm between IT and OT for real. They understand deeply you know, things like value stream mapping, um, machine, machines and protocols and automations on one hand. On the other hand, they know how the internet works. They understand protocol stacks and you know, they know what Kubernetes actually does like to containerize your uh, you know, runtime environment and so on and so forth. Um, and they can negotiate with uh, all sorts of IT vendors of all sorts. And, and they're very good, and you need to cultivate them. And, and it, it has it is, uh, been sort of like uh, an ongoing uh, ask you know, and trend, and, and I want to relay this uh, to, to the ecosystem for a second here. Like, make them go have a beer. Make them, you know, your IT and OT people, go stroll. Uh, have a mud wrestling, whatever it is, you know, you have to get them talking <laughs> and get to a point that they actively participate in building those new architectures. Um, and, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's what we really need to do for the, uh, for the groundbreakers. So, um, yeah, and you might, you know, you might ask, well, what comes next? I know in presentations like this, um, I don't know, there's like in the manual uh, chapter that I'm supposed to say, Here's the future, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, we're not going to steal the thunder from the Tulip team, nor from all of the people who came up and um, not put up keynote presentations. They actually did real demos that work here and now that you can integrate. Um, and we need to think about it not as next, as but but more as now, and you know, understand that this is all possible. So, you know, with that, you know, I want you uh, to enjoy this event. Think about architecting this future together. Um, and again, thank you very much and enjoy the day.